realistically speaking, the current global environment is not a global environment where anyone in the world can achieve a double digit growth. And therefore, uh, uh, the discussion really is theoretical. It's based on a premise that this kind of a situation or this cycle doesn't last indefinitely. And therefore, given the various variables, can we at least uh, aim high and improve? For example, uh, if you carry on some of the pending reforms that are still there, if you concentrate on some of these areas which I have just mentioned, if we are to able to improve the health of our banking system so as to be able to support growth, uh, your, your, your private sector becomes more oriented towards investment, then even if you are not able to go anywhere close to a double digit growth, the prospect of greater economic activity and improving upon your present rates is always there. I think uh, there is a headspace that India has. It's only when the global tailwinds are behind you that, that it adds another percent or two to your own potential. But I think there is a lot that India can still do in order to improve upon. For instance, I took only a small step this year on my promise on direct tax reforms, settling all disputes, etc., etc., rationalizing rates, uh, bringing down corporate rates. Uh, I only made symbolic uh, changes this year. And the idea was to express a determination that the target really is 25%. Even though if you recollect last year when I announced this, Parliament in the first instance didn't understand it. And the only point on which uh, I had some hostile noises is when I said corporate rates must come down to 25%. And when in the course of the debate I explained to them that corporates must have surplus to reinvest and you can't take, compete with global economies unless you have global taxation rates, slowly I think the political system started understanding this. Uh, you had mentioned you'd got through the other bill, but the GST, has been held up and the opposition accuses the government of being intransigent, not wanting to talk to them, talking down to them. That's one of the uh, charges that has been. What is the problem? Why aren't you getting them on board? You see, first of all, uh, let us uh, speak in terms of uh, who's not talking. Today, every state government, including all Congress state governments, and I have personally spoken to each one of the Congress state governments, tells me that they are in favor of the GST. You have every political party in parliament which has said we will vote in favor. In the Lok Sabha, every party, Congress walked out, every other party voted in favor. The Congress party, now I read a statement, has only one issue about a constitutional uh, cap, which is a little difficult to impact because neither are tariffs decided through constitutional amendments. It is extremely difficult to accept the situation that uh, every time you need uh, uh, to increase tariffs in a given emergency, uh, you have to amend the constitution and we all know how difficult it is to amend the constitution. Normally tariffs are decided in schedules. In the GST where centre and states decide together, the tariffs will be decided by the GST council and therefore can't be decided by a constitutional gap. I think that's the only glitch that remains. I would still like the Congress party to come on board and uh, uh, I can easily see and this is going to happen in this phase of the biennial elections, the numbers are significantly changing and in any case uh, I am reasonably confident that the numbers in the upper house now also are in favour of the GST. What is the RSS influence on making of the budget on economic reforms? And is there a fight or are they with, with the government on this? Well, I must tell you uh, 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 that the budgets are decided by the governments within. I do consult a lot of people. We have, uh, all, these are almost public sessions uh, where we have consultations. And uh, we have uh, in those consultation sessions uh, trade unions of all kinds which come over. Uh, the inter comes, the ATAC comes, the BMS also comes. They have their considered views, but eventually the last word belongs to the government. 
you you can't agree with everything that uh, different groups suggest of course uh, what they said is some valuable opinions which are given which we take into consideration that's about all no fight with them there's no I major think, differences that think, you have i don't think i don't think on subsidies on uh, you, you know, see on, on subsidies budget. our policy is very rational and logical we are continuing with subsidies but our subsidies are meant only for the vulnerable uh, a very small question even as we speak vijay malia's house in mumbai is being auctioned uh, kingfisher house i wanted to ask this do you see vijay malia really as an absconder guilty of malfeasance and do you accept that vijay malia actually is one of many industrialists some even more high profile and even more well connected to your government who actually have even larger npas are you going to act against them do you believe it's individuals who are responsible or the banking system well, or the political me, system responsible let me let me not uh, give you an answer which you would want to sensationalize uh, uh, now give me an honest answer my mind will be a honest answer because uh, uh, i have to answer for sins my predecessors have committed uh, you see the npa problem is really on two counts one part of the problem is because certain sectors of the economy had slowed down so if you analyze the npas the largest are in the steel sector which was facing a huge uh, chinese surge coming into india where large amount of loans have been given in individual cases and some of those people would have misconducted themselves there may not be adequate sureties and that's a source of worry i think these cases need to be segregated from the rest of the cases which are on account of the sectoral slowdown i think our immediate job as a government is to make sure that our banks particularly the public sector banks remain strong so i am trying to recapitalize the banks the reserve bank has uh, two weeks ago taken a step in order to ease in their capital norms so which brings in more capital into the banks itself but do you see mr malia as uh, an absconder guilty of malfeasance well why do you want me to make comments on uh, individual you had a full debate in parliament on it that's why i'm asking that's you where, right. where does have, the government stand what i have it? to say what i have to say his facts are clear it's pending in court every government agency whether it's the taxation department or it's the investigative agencies wherever he has violated the law is going to take strong action as far as the banks are concerned i have found out the details from the bankers itself i have been briefed that they are going all out to recover every penny of the last rupee that they can from him The Sarsang Chalak of the RSS, Mohan Ji Bhagwat, on the 3rd of March, gave a speech in which he said, "We need to give training to our youngsters to chant Bharat Mata ki Jai." What's wrong? Din Ovesi asks the RSS, "I am a patriot. I don't want to chant Bharat Mata ki Jai. Why should Ovesi and others be forced to chant Bharat Mata ki Jai if they don't want to? Does it make them anti-national? Does it make them a traitor?" Last night I was watching a TV program. and all the political parties except ovc they were objecting to his very statement irrespective of the political ideology and even the congress uh, leaders also said you can say bharat mata ki jai or jai hind or anything the thing is not the question of the words bharat mata ki jai the thing is what you want to express through your words your speeches your action that is the thing bharat mata ki jai everybody should uh, shout this slogan that is nothing wrong in that no there is absolutely nothing wrong but what if somebody says i don't want to say bharat mata ki jai is he in the view of the rss a traitor of course he is an anti national if he says because the very thing when you say that you do not want to chant bharat mata ki jai you are not allowing others also to not chant bharat mata ki jai and vande mataram and bharat mata ki jai are not the mantras are the uh, slogans coined by uh, rss the moment you say 
let there be a debate on reservation let creamy layer be properly defined then your critics will say this is a nagpur upper caste brahmin dominated organization that has never been comfortable with the idea of reservation and therefore with modi as swayam sevak in power now wants to try and find a way of doing away with reservation the politicization of reservation is detrimental to the nation's interest it has been politicized number 2 the wishes of the constitution makers was that uh, the people who deserve the reservation benefit should get it in a stipulated time but unfortunately it has not reached them so that is why the creamy layer was not suggested by rss the social scientists the political pundits the people who have studied the issue they suggested the creamy layer the supreme court endorsed it of course then uh, what is wrong in uh, demanding that uh, there should be creamy layer applied it is in the interest of the people who are not uh, getting the benefit of the reservation within the same sections who have been deprived of the chances and opportunities do you believe it is correct to enforce one view of nationalism one view of patriotism on everyone why are students so unhappy there's so much outrage in campuses from the hyderabad university campus to jnu to ftii it almost seems as if there is a problem in dealing with dissent that is for the government rss doesn't uh, uh, take these things it is for the government to deal with it why the anti india feelings are being expressed on the campuses bharat virodhi anti india is anti national and if a, a group of students whether they are students of that campus or they are outsiders if they are raising the slogans that india should be broken into pieces if they are raising slogans in favor of a criminal who attacked the temple of democracy and who has been hanged according to the law of the land if uh, slogans are raised in favor of in support of eulogizing such people then what do we conclude can any nation in this uh, world we cannot tolerate this why do women have no place in the rss so why can there not be a day when instead of you or mon ji bhagwat a woman rises to be the head of the rss why do you have a separate category for that rashtriya swayamsevak sangh is having some physical activity also on the open ground so, so because because we play kabaddi because we uh, we have many uh, physical activities this society when it was, when the rss started so we have not uh, suddenly overnight revolution cannot take place uh, like in the western countries here so that's why we have adopted that uh, the rss will be open to men only in the field activity men and women are not there together in the sangshaka all other activities of the rss are uh, women are there is there a possibility that the rss is view on homosexuality also could possibly change sir the sexual preferences are private and personal why rss should discuss that in public true but would there be opposition from the rss if section 377 what happened in the inside is, the room i don't know you don't think of homosexuality as a crime that needs to be penalized that's against indian tradition for example i don't think i don't think it it should be treated as a crime that should be punished as long as it doesn't affect the life of others why do we not see the rss distance itself more openly from these fringe elements who give the rss and hindutva a bad name we are not even embraced the question of distancing comes only if i have spoken on behalf of them the question of distancing comes before only if i have embraced them when i have not done it why should i say i repeatedly that i, I should distance no. have i supported that has the rss issued any statement you haven't condemned what they did either we have condemned we have condemned you are on record that what has happened the vandalism in front of patiala high court cannot be condoned cannot be acknowledged cannot be supported break news coming in this afternoon bomb scare at the indira gandhi international airport in delhi threat to air india nepal airlines flight all uh, on board two flights have been detained 
Let's check. Speak. So this time it's going to be me who's going to be talking to it's you. It's going to be me who's going to tell you what's new from the world of technology. We have news, we have reviews, and we have Sahil doing the Redmi Note 3 review. And 